Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic life. Today we are going over everything that you are going to need in order to get started making your own fully personalized layouts or overlays for your gameplay videos and live streams on Twitch, YouTube, etc. And of course, it's all free. This tutorial will be split into two videos, with the first being how to do all the image creation stuff, and the second be putting it actually all together with the live elements like your mic, gameplay, interactive text fields, etc. All right. Let's jump right in. So first off, you're going to need some programs on your computer to actually do stuff. For the first section of this guide, we will create images for the overlay using a photo editor called GIMP. I use GIMP because of how powerful, versatile, and scalable it is for being a free program. You can absolutely use any photo editor you want here. Just make sure it can save PNG or transparent images. And no, Instagram is not what I'm talking about. You'll need something that's comparable to Photoshop. Okay, so here we are on the GIMP site. There will be a link down in the description below, or you can just type GIMP.org into your browser, and this will pop up, and go ahead and hit the download button and go through the installation process. I just would go with the download GIMP directly. You don't need to go through BitTorrent or anything like that. Um, make sure you have the right OS, of course. And once that is downloaded, go ahead and install it in the normal way that you would install something on your computer. I have already done that, and so we are going to launch GIMP from down here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go up here to file new to create a new image and make it 3840 by 2160. All right, so when GIMP loads your image, it should be a white rectangle like this with a gray background. You're first going to create a new layer here. Make sure you keep with the default sizing of 3840 by 2160 or 1920 by 1080 and then just go here and delete the background. So the next step you want to take in terms of actual design of your layout is figure out what you're streaming. Are you streaming a computer game? Are you streaming a game from your Switch, your PS4, your 3DS? Are you doing a an old Game Boy game? Are you using your SNES Classic to stream some old SNES games? Each one of these games has a native format, and depending on how much you care about it and your viewers care about it, you may want to stick within the native format of everything. For anything modern and most of the majority of games that are going to be played on Twitch, the resolution that you can use is 1920 by 1080. This includes pretty much anything that plugs in via HDMI with the exception of the like classic consoles because they literally change the resolution to match the more closely to the original format. Handhelds are going to be different. Retro games are going to be different. Google what your ratio or resolution is and just take note of it. We're going to do two examples here. We're going to do one example for a 1920 by 1080 a modern game, and then we're going to do one example for a Game Boy. If you need a list of specifically handheld games, because they can be very hard to figure out what the handheld system resolutions are, there's a link down in the description below. So for the modern overlay or the 1920 by 1080 one, go up here and go to Layer new layer and set this layer to be as big as your game is going to be. This is just to get basically the shape and the size of what your game is going to be. So I've created that new layer. It is exactly the size of the resolution of the game we're going to play. And I've just filled it in using the paint bucket tool with black. This is just a placeholder so you know how big your game is. It does not have to stay within this size. You can move it wherever you want. Then you can use the scale tool right here. It says scale tool when you hover it over. It looks like two, two little squares with an arrow going between them. Make sure you're highlighted on the layer you want. And we can make this as big or as small as we want. And I actually forgot before you scale it, I'm just going to hit undo. Before you scale it, make sure you hit the lock button. That way this resolution stays the same. And if let's say we want the game to be as big as the as the whole layout, great. We'll make it as big as the whole layout. Let's say we only want the game to be a small part. We can make it to be a small part. We're going to do for right now, we're going to make it the entire size of the game. So we're actually going to just lock in those coordinates to 3840 by 2160. The next thing you want to think about is what style of layout do you want? What are the colors of your stream? Let's say we're making, let's say I was making this layout for someone and let's say their Twitch name was Happy Acorn. Um, I do not know if there's a Happy Acorn on Twitch. If if you are here, I am sorry. I just made that name up off the top of my head. Um, our colors are going to be something like brown, 
green, maybe some blues for the sky for some highlights, but we're going to stick to brown and greens. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new layer of the default size, uh, 1380 by 2160, and we are going to create a background. So what I did was I first went to the, I just clicked on this square that was black, and I'm choosing a color. I'm going to choose this kind of just dark forest green, and we're going to, in the same way we filled in the black one, we're gonna fill this layer in with green. So if you wanna do this and that's the style of your stream, great, no problem at all. But let's say we wanted something a little, just with a little more flair. We can click on this, the gradient tool, which is right next to the uh, bucket tool if you leave the default settings, and click on this thing here, and we should be able to find, yeah, FG to BG, or foreground to background. This is our foreground color, this is our background color. So let's go from like this dark green, I'm gonna click on it again, and move this slider just a darker green. And then we're gonna just grab from here, go to here, and get a little bit of a fade. It just adds a little bit more. So here's our background. Now that we have our background, we are able to cut out essentially everything that we want shown for the, for the game. In this case, if we were to put this layer up here, we see, oh, the game takes up the entire thing. So we're gonna actually cut into the game a little bit. Um, sorry, I forgot to do this. Go ahead and duplicate your layer. Duplicate your, your background layer. All we're doing here is just saving a background layer so we can reference it later in case we mess something up. Then go on your new one. And let's say we just want the, actually, no, let's make the top showing. So we just, we just want something here on the top. Um, we're gonna go like this and we're just gonna, once we've highlighted, I just hit the delete key and it goes away and we're left with our gameplay underneath. I know that black means gameplay. You can make this whatever color you want. You can even put a screenshot of some gameplay in there if it makes you happy. Or you can just, for right now, because this layout's pretty simple, get rid of it and you wanna see these squares because anything that these squares shows is transparent and will show the games underneath. So we've got this up here. Let's say we just don't like the style of this and we want to create some kind of harsher lines. We don't want it to take up as much space. You can select your lasso tool up here, which will, if you just click, I clicked and released, moved, and it moves in a linear fashion versus if I was to hold it. If I hold it, it's like a free draw. If I were to just click and release, we're just gonna clear that selection. And if I just click and then click again, it'll create a straight line. So all I'm doing here is just finishing it off so I can get a new fresh tool. If you just leave it like this, you're not gonna be able to start a new selection and you've gotta create a new selection in order to, to restart. But let's just go here and we're just kinda gonna approximate this. You could make it as even as you want. Um, but once you've got here, we've selected this space, right click, select, invert, delete. And now we've got this cool little trapezoid here at the top which of course we will go to the auto crop layer to make it as, make the current layer that we're working on only as big as what we see. It's not this entire space. It's only as big as what we see. Use this alignment tool, highlight it, and once again, center it to the image. That way we know it's in the center. Um, so here's where we're gonna put our text. This is where we're gonna put like the recent follower and the recent um, subscriber. And, but we'll hold on to this for now. While we're still here, we'll we'll start making the space for your webcam. So, or actually, you know, you know what? Let's highlight this first. So, we're gonna go here and hit the fuzzy select tool, as it's called in GIMP. It's like a magic wand, and it will just highlight what it sees. Any of this transparent stuff, it's not gonna work with. Layer, new layer, and we're going to select grow. We're gonna grow the selection by let's say seven and it's just gonna be slightly bigger than what the green was. Now I'm gonna to go to a brown because we're doing an acorn theme here. So let's go to a little darker brown that I like better. Let's get some more red in there. There we go. And I'm going to fill in this new layer with the brown. However, that completely covered up our green. I don't want that. So then I go select and shrink it by, we did it by seven. So let's shrink it by like 14, double of what we grew it by. And we will then delete the brown, leaving the green. However, I don't want the brown line on the top. I want that to have room for 
room for the text. So I'm literally just, I'm this, this makes sense to me. I'm continuing the line that the brown has through here and going to essentially delete this top part. The way I zoomed in was I held down control and then moved my scroll wheel. I don't know how to do it on a laptop. This is just how I do it on my desktop. I uh, held down control and you can zoom in and out. So first we will delete kind of this first half and I'm completing the selection, deleting the part up there. Then I'm doing it again, selecting as close as I can, carrying the line up as best as I can and deleting the rest. So now we've got this cool little double layer effect, but it's still not as good as it can be. One thing that I add a lot on my layouts, this is a personal preference, you do not have to follow my lead, but I add shadows. I like shading. I like there to be kind of a sense of depth. So if you've highlighted this layer right over here in your layers and go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, you should get the options for a new sh a new shadow that you're going to add to this layer. Make sure you don't you hit you uncheck this allow resizing box, otherwise it will it will change the image size and you'll have to completely restart. Sometimes it's so slight you may not notice it, and then you put it into OBS and everything doesn't line up and you're confused. Make sure you hit allow resizing is or make sure you check allow resizing off for for our shadow we're just going to do something i want it to actually like instead of shadowing down here on the game i want it to shadow on the green layer itself so i'm going to change the x offset which is the left and right to zero and i'm going to change the y offset to be negative so the shadow goes up and negative five should be fine i'm also going to take the blur radius down this just means how much it literally blurs the outside of the shadow with the shadow this small i want it to be pretty uh pretty poignant, pretty, pretty dark. So I do that and then I get my, my shadow line. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, just hit control Z, undo it. And then you say, you know what? I actually want it to be on the bottom. So then I'm going to make this back to, we're going to do eight and we're going to make this back to eight as well. And we're going to increase the blur radius. This way you guys can see kind of what different shadows look like. This one's going to move it X eight, Y8, so it's going to be slightly down and to the right. And that looks good. I like that. Um, adds a little bit of depth here, and it adds the depth below as well. It gives us just a little more than just um, than just the flat, too. Kind of like adding the gradient. So next, we're going to take the same brown color and do a very similar thing here for, your, for the webcam um for your face basically i'm going to create a box of whatever size you want how big do you want this square we're going to do something a little bit smaller because we're, we're going to basically pretend i don't have a green screen we're not going to get into green screen stuff so we make a square fill it in select shrink we did 8 plus 14 before so that would be quick math come on tubs 22 um we're gonna go to 22 and shrink it by the same size that we shrunk this one and go ahead actually because we can because this is a straight space we can reselect the rectangle tool kind of select our selection to get these little squares back and drag this guy be very i messed it up just be very careful to drag it straight there we go and can delete the whole thing. And now we've got just just a little extra something for our for our webcam. We don't really need to do much more than this. You can do whatever you want. Like I said, this is a simple layout just for example purposes. So now we've got a space for our webcam and we've got a space up here to put some text. So the last thing we got to do is go to the text tool click up in the general area and just start typing. Now this is, we're gonna go over this a little bit because the text tool in GIMP can be a little bit annoying. We're gonna just type subscriber. It's way too small to see, that's fine. You're gonna hit, once you have it typed out, hit Control A. First step is make it the color you want. This is where we're gonna bring in that like bluish, that weird bluish color. In fact, actually I kinda like going with an orangish color with this brownish green theme that we have going on. So make it the color you want and then start playing around with sizes. This The only way you're going to figure this out is really experimentation. Is that too big? Is that too small? I don't know. 
click on the move tool right here to move it around, but you can't just click here. That's going to move the layer that the move tool was actually selecting. You have to make sure that this little, I don't know, plus cross arrow thing, if you guys can see it, it's like a black, it's a black inside with a white border around it right next to my cursor. You want to make it all white or white in the center with a black on the outside, basically so you're hovering over some actual text. Then you move it to where you want and you say, you know what, that is a really bad font. I don't like that at all. Highlight it again, hit the hit the text tool, get into the text box, um, control A to highlight everything, and then go here and just start typing. If you type A, it'll bring up all the A fonts. If you type B, it'll bring up all the B fonts, etc., etc. There's plenty of tutorials. It's super easy to install new fonts into GIMP. If you install them into your system, whether on uh, Mac or Windows, it will automatically install them into GIMP once you reboot the program. Every time you install a new font, you got to reboot the program. Since we're going with like a woodland theme, let's choose one that kind of seems almost teachy. Teachy and woodland kind of goes together for me. You don't have to agree with that. So we've got subscriber here and we've got follower. Now, given the space we have, if I write recent subscriber and recent follower in this font, as big as it is, that is going to take up way too much room. Absolutely way too much room. So there's a few things we can do. We can, I mean, literally just change it to recent sub or just put sub. Or we can still write out the word recent. Oh, that is a, that is a note on... GIMP text. If you get rid of everything, it resets it to sans 18 with the foreground color. So I'm going to bring that back. Basically, you got to keep one letter there if you want to keep your font. Yes, it's annoying. It's definitely annoying. We're going to go with recent subscriber. And at this point, you can create this however you want. Uh, and for the sake of this this video, we're just going to keep with recent subscriber. We're not going to do the recent follower there, but you could, let's say, take this and make it a whole lot smaller. Let's go to 40. Ah, that's a little too small. Let's go to 60. And so you've got your recent subscriber like up here, and then you put recent follower over here. Um, but given how much room we have, this is, it's going to be tight with the extra text in here. And that's just a lot of text on the screen. You want to design this in a way that it can fit everything. Um, I've seen some people use, instead of saying the words recent subscriber, they use the emote, like their main quote unquote emote to say, hey, the subs get some emotes. So you guys are creative. You can come up with something incredible for that. Do it how you like. For me, for this Tutorial, let's pretend we just want 90. We don't want it too huge. So we have recent subscriber. And it definitely takes up quite a bit of space. You can change the font to have it take up less space. But the other thing you can do after you've highlighted everything is change these guys. This one will change your width. The other one will change your height. So you can kind of cram the letters in a little bit more. So we'll do that. Um, whether you like that or not, once again, that is up to you. If you have two different settings and you redo it, it will reset everything. Uh, but just for this video, I think we're good there. I am happy with that layout. Our layout for a 1080p, a standard game on the image side is now done. It's, it's literally that simple. We did quite a bit more than we needed to but it works and it gives you the tools for what you need. Now, let's say you had a, let's go back to this site over here and let's say we wanted to do that Game Boy game. We have a width of 160 and a height of 140. So we're gonna go back here, new layer, and just like we did for 1080 by 1920 by 1080, hold on, messed up. You're gonna go here, file, save. Do not forget to save your work. Absolutely do not forget to save your work. I have done this so many times save it absolutely wherever you would like um i'm just gonna save it in twitch youtube tutorials we'll make a new folder gimp uses its own proprietary file manager file explorer and i don't like it at all but it's just what you got to use to create a new folder you got to go up here it's not a right click. once you're in here you can hit save i know i left it as entitled you can change to whatever name you want um so now this one's saved 
Now we're going to go up here to File, Save As, and instead of leaving this as the 1920 by 1080, we're going to title this one Game Boy Layout. So I know that it is the Game Boy Layout instead of the basic one. Um, great. We have saved that. We will keep the we'll keep the space overall for our webcam, and we will keep the the text, but pretty much everything else needs to go because the Game Boy layout's gonna look very, very different than the 1920 by 1080p because of the resolution difference. So first we're just gonna go here and get rid of our shadow layer, get rid of the green layer, and get rid of the brown layer, which is all the same. Oh, this is good. If let's say you have this layer right here that is it includes both parts and you want to keep both but you don't want to keep the other or you want to move them around separately we can go back to our handy dandy lasso tool right here and this one we can free select so you select the part of the layer that you want make sure right now i'm on the uh on the text that's not going to work i need to go to the brown layer make sure you've selected the right layer i am gone control x for control cut you can also right click and hit cut then control V for control paste. It creates a new floating selection over here. Right click to new layer. And now when I hide this layer, it hides this part. It basically has separated the two layers. So we've still got a recent subscriber and we've got our, our general webcam space. However, we don't have anything else. This is why we created this extra. We created this layer as an entire layer. Like we created the background as an entire gradient layer and not just the part of the image that we wanted so we could do multiple layouts like this once you're in here go ahead and duplicate this again so you don't accidentally um delete your base for making stuff and we can just highlight this okay the layers that we've highlighted i'm just going to do some cleanup and delete them so i don't mess up or think that they're they're viable layers and since we've changed the game name we're totally fine with that um, delete the layer, and now we've got basically everything we need. So just like the last time, we're gonna go layer, new layer, and make a layer of our Game Boy resolution, which was 160 by 144. And once again, if you need the handheld, um, the handheld resolution, there's a link to that site in the description below because they can be, they're all different and they're all hard to find sometimes. Um, so we've created our new layer. It's super tiny, that is fine. We're gonna go back and make this all black. The hex code for black is 000000. 000, 000, 000, 000. The white is FFFFFF. Um, and so you, we made the color black, filled in the layer with that. And now we can go back to resizing it to actually something we need. Gotta lock it in place, drag. And let's say we want this as big as the, let's say we want this as tall. We want this kind of all the way shifted to the right as tall as our the rest of our layout. So then you can go here and you can just change the height because we know the height is 2160. And because we've hit this lock tool, it'll automatically change the width to the proper size. So now we have this as our kind of this is where the game is going to go. And then we have all of this space over here to play with. This is a lot of fun. You literally can do so, when you have a game like a Game Boy game or any retro stuff, often with a smaller resolution, you just have more space to work with on your layout than the new games. So first step is to get rid of, because when we load this into OBS, this is not gonna be here. We need to get rid of the space. This is why we create this black square. Once we're in here, we can go back to that magic fuzzy wand tool select thing. I think it's called the fuzzy select tool. Yeah, fuzzy select tool. Make sure our threshold is super, super high because we're literally just trying to tell the difference between black and nothing. Because if we got rid of all these other layers, we have nothing else on the screen. Make sure you're highlighted on your, your Game Boy layer. It's going to change the yellow background to like this or the yellow line to white. Then go over to your green and with that highlighted, hit delete. Then you can hide this and you're left with this clear blank background for everything else. Um, from here, you can do absolutely anything you want. We can go over here and we can duplicate this layer. We're gonna move it like I showed before, make sure we're highlighted on it. Now we, now we can do, because we have the space, recent subscriber and recent follower. Um, and let's say you even want a recent donation because you have a lot of space. 
can go over here, duplicate layer once more, grab it. See, I missed I missed the text there, so it moved the wrong thing. I just use Control Undo for that. Control Z, rehighlight the text tool, and do recent donation. Or let's say we want like Oops, see, you can't get rid of the first letter. If you get rid of the first letter, it resets everything. Top donation. Say we want the person that has the the top donation here. Now, if you're looking at this, you're probably kind of upset because things aren't lined up. We use that alignment tool once more. You highlight this, and then you have to hold down the shift key. So hold down the shift key to get all three of them. You also want to go over here to your fuzzy select tool. We I have to redo that, but I have to redo the selection. That's fine. Go over to this layer and highlight once again to get this sort of thing, like the rest of the green selected. Then with that selected, highlight the, the text layers. And instead of having it say image up here, go to selection, then hit the center. And now it's made it in the center for all of the for the entirety of this green space. I also don't like the, whatever it's called, the colons. So I'm just gonna get rid of them. Um, but that also means then I need to reselect. I need to realign. Um, let's highlight, make sure we have, if we were highlighted on this layer, it would just keep this text box as a selection, not the entire thing. So make sure you're on the right layer um, that it can actually accommodate the entire selection and recenter it. Now we're centered and I have left a space here because the OBS or open broadcaster software, what's going to put all of this together, put all the live elements like the game and the mic and the, or the game and the video and the text into this, it handles all of that text, the browser text, the alerts, all of that by itself. I've highlighted the rectangular tool and I'm just clicking out here in the gray area to deselect essentially, to just clear my selection so I don't accidentally delete anything that I don't want or don't need. We're gonna do a very similar thing that we did before with the brown. I'm just kind of making a general, just rectangular selection here and I'm gonna create a line with brown so it stays within the same theme. I don't like how white it was so I'm gonna move it in a little bit. That seems better to me. You can kind of grab these and do whatever you want with it. So we've done exactly that. Um, new layer, just like before. And then we're gonna go back to this brown that we found. If you ever click on these colors, it'll save the last one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. <laughs> twelve layers, or twelve colors. Go back to our paint bucket fill tool. Zoom in a little bit so we don't miss. And cover it in brown. And to save on space so we don't cut into the uh, so we don't cut into the gameplay too much. I'm just gonna take this layer and shift it over. All I did was make sure it was highlighted over here and now I'm just using the arrow keys until I see green. So now I see green, move it back a little bit and I know that the brown is not gonna have green peeking underneath. We are once again gonna do a shadow on this guy. Drop shadow. Um, however, I'm gonna move it to the left this time because I want it to kind of cover the game a little bit and give that effect. Um, we're not gonna do it as big as before though. So the Y offset is just zero. I went the wrong way and that should be good enough. Yep, I like that. It just gives a little bit of an effect. You can also add shadows to text. Drop shadow here while highlighted on the text layer. We'll drop this one to the right a little bit and we'll do six and six and make it a little less blurry and get something like that. Highlight here, it'll save your settings so you can just keep redoing it and highlight the third one. Unfortunately, I don't know of a way. If you guys know of a way that you can do all three of these at the same time, that'd be great. It just adds a little bit of depth, whatever you want. If you want to add a box, and a lot of my layouts I've added box, we're not going to do that for the sake of time. You do it the same way. For the webcam, because we're kind of going to center it here, I'm actually not going to use, is it this layer? Yeah, we're not going to use this layer that kind of sticks off to the side. We're just going to delete that. Um, I don't like it as much as I did when we first created it on the different layout. So right click, delete. And we will make a new a new box here that will kind of house our own head. And again, you can do literally whatever you want with all this. This is just the basic tools. 
there we are. Um, I forgot to make a new layer. So because I was highlighted on this layer and this layer is only this big, it doesn't include all this stuff, it didn't show up. So I've just made a new layer now. That's the entire space. Filled this in with brown, gone to the selection, shrunk it down by 22, which was the same that we did it before, deleted it out, and let's add a nice little drop shadow to this guy. We'll increase the blur radius a little bit on him. So it just gives a little bit of something. I also messed up that. If you leave a selection active and you make a shadow, it will put the selection on the... I mean, it'll put the shadow on the selection instead of on the layer that you're trying to. Now, while I think this kind of too, kind of like a sheet of paper on another sheet of paper effect looks pretty cool, that's not the effect we're going for in this layout, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go undo, make sure I'm deselected, and then add the shadow, which will then add like the brown is on top instead of the green being on top. But that is something else you can do. Um, you can do stuff like rounding corners. We can do beveling and add, make it look more um, three-dimensional and do a lot more with this. But again, we're just trying to go over the basics. How did I create the image? How did I do more of the logistical stuff for this? So for now, this layout works great for our Game Boy games. And so the last thing we have to do is file, save the XSF, X xcf file xcf is what gimp uses for this multi-layered file however you don't want to save these images as an xcf obs is not going to have any clue what you're talking about so make sure you only have the layers shown here we don't want this black layer here because otherwise we'll get a black square that we can't do anything with make sure that you're only showing the layers that you want shown then go to file export you can put in the same directory whatever you want just make sure that this says png to change the file type on an export with uh, with GIMP, all you got to do is just erase it and change the text right there. Make sure you just have your name .png. I think the default is JPEG, so make sure you change it to PNG. So there we go. We're going to save it like that. Export. Perfect. And since we actually, I actually forgot to export the first layout, we'll do that as well once this has finished. We'll go to file. We will go to open recent and open our our standard layout. Make it the size of the screen. And we will export it using the same name and make sure it says PNG. And that should do the same for us. And that's it. It's pretty simple once you understand how GIMP works, where the tools are, and which ones you actually need. In part two, we're going to go over OBS Studio, which involves taking that image and actually overlaying it onto the game, putting your face in there, putting uh, text and alerts or whatever else you want on the stream. And that video should launch pretty soon. If you like this one, let me know in the comments with a subscription, with a like, all that good jazz. Have a wonderful, a wonderful day, everyone. And as always, stay tuned.